In the world of high fidelity, power is everything. It drives the loudspeakers, fills the room, and gives music its sense of life and space. But in the early days of hi-fi, power didn't always behave the way listeners expected. I've been reading an article in Audio Magazine from February 1965. Effects of Power Line Variation on Low Frequency Operation of Amplifiers by George Layston. It's quite a deep dive article, but I'm going to try and give you a flavour of it and of problems that we don't seem to have to face so much in the present day. Back in the 1960s, many amplifiers, especially tube models and early transistor designs, relied directly on the household main supply. They used simple, unregulated power circuits. When the mains voltage dipped or rose, the amplifier's performance changed right along with it. So in this video, I'll explore how the strength of your local power line could decide how your amplifier sounded. I'll revisit George Layston's 1965 investigation into this problem and see why voltage variation could rob an amplifier of its base power. I'll also look at how engineers eventually learned to stabilise those wayward power supplies, creating the reliable sound we take for granted today. In 1965, the typical hi-fi amplifier was built around a mains transformer, a rectifier and a few capacitors to smooth the rectified supply. It was a simple and effective system, but not a stable one. The nominal household voltage in North America at the time was 117 volts AC. But in practice it could drift anywhere from 105 to 125 volts, depending on local demand, wiring losses or even the time of day. During the evening when homes were lit and appliances running, the voltage could drop noticeably. Since most amplifiers of the period lacked any form of regulation, their internal power rails followed these changes directly. When the mains voltage fell, so did the amplifier's internal voltages, and that meant less available headroom and a lower maximum output before distortion set in. George Liston, an engineer and contributor to Audio Magazine, decided to find out just how much these fluctuations mattered. He tested several commercial amplifiers, exposing them to variations similar to what a typical home might experience. His results were striking. At full mains voltage, each amplifier performed as expected. But when he reduced the input by 10 or 15%, still within real-world conditions, the available low-frequency power dropped significantly. In some cases, amplifiers lost more than a quarter of their rated output at the bottom of the audio spectrum. Bass became weaker and distortion increased. In others, the clipping point shifted downward, meaning that even moderate volume settings could push the amplifier into distortion. Leiston concluded that while most hi-fi systems could tolerate small voltage changes without obvious distortion, serious dips in mains voltage had a direct effect on low frequency performance. To understand why this happens, it helps to look inside a traditional power supply. The rectifier and smoothing capacitors convert AC from the mains into DC for the amplifier's circuits. When the amplifier draws large amounts of current, particularly on deep bass notes, those capacitors must supply energy between the peaks of the rectified AC waveform. If the supply voltage is already low, the capacitors have less energy stored, and the output voltage sags more severely under load. The result is power supply droop, the rails collapse slightly on loud or sustained low-frequency passages. The sagging DC doesn't just limit the available power, it also modulates the signal path, introducing distortion and reducing damping at the loudspeaker. The amplifier can lose its grip on the woofer cone, leading to a softer, less defined bass. Layston's tests demonstrated that these effects were measurable and audible especially in amplifiers with small or under-filtered power supplies. In the early 1960s, the industry was in transition. Tube amplifiers were still the standard, but transistors were beginning to take over. Each technology had its own way of responding to power supply variations. Tube circuits with their large transformers and high voltage rails were tolerant to an extent of small voltage changes. The filaments were more sensitive than plate voltage. A sustained drop could reduce emission and lower the gain. Early transistor amplifiers faced a different challenge. Their new silicon devices could operate at lower voltages, but they also demanded stable bias conditions. Small variations in supply could shift the bias points, increasing crossover distortion or pushing the transistors into saturation. In both cases, the underlying issue was the same. The amplifier's behaviour depended directly on the health and stability of the main supply. 
Once the problem was understood, designers began to look for solutions. One simple approach was oversizing the power transformer and filter capacitors so that voltage sag had less effect under load. This increased cost and weight but gave the amplifier more stability. Another approach was to introduce voltage regulation for the smaller signal stages. Regulated suppliers kept the preamplifier and voltage amplifier circuits constant, even if the output stage rails drifted slightly. This improved linearity and noise performance without a major redesign. By the late 1960s, as solid state devices matured, full regulation became practical. Transistorized regulators could maintain a fixed DC voltage within a fraction of a volt. This marked a turning point in amplifier design, laying the groundwork for the stable, wide bandwidth amplifiers of the 1970s. For many audiophiles of the 1960s, the effects laced and described were part of everyday listening, even if they didn't recognize the cause. They might notice that their system sounded more powerful at certain times of day, or that the bass seemed firmer on weekends when the local voltage happened to be higher. Some enthusiasts of the more extreme variety installed mains voltage stabilizers to keep the supply to their equipment consistent. These weren't common, but for serious listeners, they were worth the investment. In professional studios and broadcast stations, power conditioning would become standard practice, ensuring that audio wasn't affected by local voltage swings. The issues laced and documented may seem like mouldy and decayed history now, but they laid the foundation for modern amplifier design. Today, most amplifiers include tightly regulated supplies, often switch mode designs that maintain constant output over a wide mains input voltage range. However, the underlying principle hasn't changed. The power supply defines the character of the amplifier. If the supply cannot deliver steady voltage and current, the sound will change under dynamic load. That's why designers still devote much of an amplifier's weight, cost and engineering to the power section. And even now, audiophiles debate the benefits of power conditioners, regenerators and dedicated mains lines. These modern solutions are echoes of the same concern that Leyston identified 60 years ago. Leyston's article was more than a technical report. It was a reminder that performance on paper doesn't always match performance in real life. An amplifier tested in the lab at full mains voltage might meet every specification. But in a listener's home with a weaker supply, it could behave very differently. This insight helped push the industry towards real-world testing standards, where amplifiers were evaluated under the kinds of conditions users actually experienced. It also encouraged designers to think more deeply about power supply dynamics, how the supply responds to music, not just static test tones. The hi-fi revolution of the 1960s was about more than better sound. It was about understanding what makes sound consistent and reliable. George Layston's work in Audio Magazine revealed that what comes out of the main socket, something most listeners never thought about, could shape the entire listening experience. His findings helped inspire more robust, better regulated amplifier designs and reminded engineers that an amplifier is only as strong as its power supply. So the next time you enjoy a clean, effortless bass line from your modern system, spare a thought for the 1960s audiophiles for whom mains voltage was literally an everyday issue. If your memory is longer or better than mine, please let's have your corrections or updates in the comments. See you soon.